Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this week's Way Forward Workshop Leader Lunch Break, where we are thrilled to welcome Brandon Cornuke. In most of his waking hours, Brandon is the Vice President of Strategy and Innovation at Magnet, and there he helps innovators turn their product ideas into growing and thriving businesses. In the few hours that remain in his day, he finds time to be an author, and an adjunct professor of design and innovation at Case Western Reserve University. He is among those incredibly cool people who have their own website where he boldly and accurately proclaims, I help innovators turn their ideas into businesses. His passion and his purpose is inspiring and educating entrepreneurs, business leaders, and students. Prior to his current role, five and a half years ago, when he came to Magnet, he was very busy having co-founded a successful consumer products company, built a corporate innovation group at American Greetings, led a half billion dollar consumer electronic business at Target, and served Fortune 500 companies as a consultant. His new book, the Value Proposition Matrix guides innovators to ask the right questions to succeed. Brandon, we're looking forward to your inspiration. Thank you for having me and thank you for the fabulous introduction. That's with passion, I, I love it. Thank you so much. Um, it's great to be here with everybody today. I see some, some smiling faces uh, that I know and some names uh, on the screen, so that's great to see. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and uh, and pull open the content for today. Everybody see that? Got a few nods. Okay, um, away we go. So I understand uh, we've got about ten minutes to 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 work on this this topic here, and then uh, then we'll jump to some questions, which is great because that's really where the the meat of, of this will uh, will will come up. Because um, as you can see, um, talking about the innovation ecosystem here in Cleveland and, and the greater region is a big job. In fact, as I as I kind of thought back on on my suggestion about what we might talk today, I, I realized I might have bit off more than I can chew. Uh, but we're going to do our best to to get get you all through this uh, in uh, in some uh, with some with some good content and uh, and conversation. So uh, away we go. Um, so. Let me just tell you quickly about Magnet, if you don't know who we are. Um, Magnet is the region's center for talent, transformation, innovation, and leadership in manufacturing. Uh, we've been around 30 years helping small and medium manufacturers all over Northeast Ohio grow and thrive. Um, the, the four pillars, we call it, which I just described to you around talent, meaning helping connect the manufacturing ecosystem with the resource, the people resources they need to, to grow, um, as well as transformation, meaning um, we help industry embrace new technologies to compete. And we also help innovators thrive within manufacturing and physical product worlds. And uh, we help catalyze leadership around the region uh, to guide us through what we hope is uh, a, a continued growth and, uh, and vibrancy around manufacturing, which is so important to, to Northeast Ohio. So that is what Magnet does. Uh, I focus on the innovation pillar, this, this number three we're talking about. Now, what does that really mean? Uh, it means that we help, as Marianne said, innovators turn ideas into businesses, but there is a wonderful ecosystem sitting around us here in Cleveland and in the greater Northeast Ohio region that I thought it might be really exciting to tell this audience about and then engage in some questions because I get questions about it all the time. How do we help innovators uh, grow and thrive, go from idea to scale? Well, it turns out here in Cleveland and Northeast Ohio, we do a great job at this. We have a robust infrastructure uh, and I'd love to tell you about it. Um, there are pieces and parts that I'm going to bring up, but I'm going to bring up one example of a node that you might might see out there. Um, uh, but first, I'm going to tell you what, what we're trying to do. So what is our innovation ecosystem trying to accomplish? We are coming together as a region to connect innovators, with the experts, or expertise, capital, and connections they need to grow their business. We understand that an innovation does not happen in a vacuum and that it takes all of us working with these three really important components expertise, capital, and connections, right? The folks who can help you get things done, the money, and of course, the people who are often become your, um, your partners and your, and your customers. Um, we are constantly working on how to do that. How do we do that? Well, we provide and expand a collaborative network 
with specialized resources and programs. Um, one example of this that, that some of you might be aware of looks like this. Um, the, uh, the Northeast Ohio Startup Network uh, coordinated through Jumpstart and, uh, and funded largely by the Third Frontier divides its efforts into two components. One, this network creates uh, a, or this network allows access to a series of experts um, through organizations like Jumpstart and Magnet, as well as Bounce and Youngstown, incu a business incubator, Case and others, all in support of a particular type of, of innovator. In this case, it's typically startups that are uh, technology focused. And there's a bunch of different technologies that they classify as, as, as the appropriate tech they're trying to support. And on the other side of that equation, also facilitated by Jumpstart, is a funding mechanism. Funds through could come flow into these, these various innovators through a number of different ways, whether it's the North Coast Venture Group, Jumpstart itself, um, the Archangels, or a new fund that we call the Advanced Manufacturing Fund. In both cases, both sides of this equation, again, they're trying to focus on a specific type of, of innovator at a specific point in their journey, and they're trying to provide expertise as well as money to, to fund those efforts. And as you can see, there are a broad range of organizations, small and large, as well as types of funding mechanisms that go into this, this effort every day. This is just one piece of a much larger network that supports innovators in Northeast Ohio. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, there's the, the Northeast Ohio Startup Next Group through the Third Frontier. You may also hear that called the ESP or the Entrepreneurial Service Provider Network, but there's more. Um, so there are specialized organizations that focus on industry verticals like UH's um, Ventures Group or the Cleveland Clinic's Innovation Team. There are also organizations, again, like Magnet or even the Cleveland Water Alliance who focus on other industries like manufacturing or water technologies. There's also a group of institutions like Case, CSU, and, uh, and the Cleveland Innovation of Art that all have interests in helping particular populations um, help connect them to the, the innovation ecosystem, whether that's students or entrepreneurs who are looking to engage the student uh, population or even, even faculty members. And then there are organizations that are focused more on small business innovation, the, the kinds of kind of everyday innovation that you see out there and establish small businesses with, with known business models. You also see this in a group of folks who are focused on um, DE&I efforts. So this is to, to focus on underrepresented populations in our community to make sure they have access to this broad range of resources and are supported as well. You can see other specific types of organizations like i Edge, or Promise Partners that focus on specific types of entrepreneurs at a moment in their journey. i for example, will help innovators early on do what we call customer discovery, which is helping engage customers in this process of understanding their needs and listening to them. Um, Edge helps orga established organizations think about uh, innovation and Promise Partners helps uh, early on stage entrepreneurs looking to acquire or enter uh, entrepreneurship through, through acquisition. We also have a bunch of private organizations in town. I just picked out a few that I work with all the time. Rainer Auto focuses on intellectual property for innovators. And Nottingham's Burke does a lot of design work for innovators across the, the, the size spectrum. And Good Marketing helps, um, helps innovators license their technologies. And finally, um, we have a bunch of funders in the region. This is just a couple um, who push uh, money into the system to support many of these programs you see here and, and many, many others. But you've heard me say so far is organizations like this. So anybody on the, the call who doesn't see their organization sitting on this, this, uh, this chart or, or has worked with others, that is by my, my omission, but not, not unconsciously. It, I know that this ecosystem is much broader than this, um, but this is a overview of the types of organizations and how they fit into the picture around, uh, around on our, our innovators. So as we move on to, uh, to, to the conversation and the, and the questions, I just want to leave you with a few things. Um, understand that our innovation system is robust, growing, and more interconnected than ever. Over the, the six years I've been a part of this, this ecosystem, um, I've seen it do nothing but collaborate more, um, create more and robust resources and, and focus even more on the folks we, we are meant to serve. 
Um, but there is no master map. There's no front door. I get this all the time. Is, is there one place I can go to see this all? Is there one big, um, big chart or one front door? No, there's not. Um, but the community is highly collaborative. In fact, one of the strengths of Northeast Ohio and, and, and Cleveland is that we know uh, each other in many cases. It, even in fact, as I'm looking on the call, I see so many friendly, friendly faces and names. Um, that's our superpower, I think, in Northeast Ohio is our ability to know each other and collaborate. And so connecting with one of these organizations effectively means you're connecting with all of them because we know each other and are interested in helping fund and funnel innovation to the right place. So, um, so we're definitely um, open to guiding innovators to the resources they need. So that is my very rapid attempt to go over a huge system um, with many more parts than I could possibly describe here, but I wanted to give you a flavor for what it looks like as an innovator uh, and from an organization who's, um, who's helping innovators, and then offer um, my insights to you in terms of uh, answering any questions or, or helping connect you or, uh, or inspire you in terms of your own, your own attempt to, to engage with this, with this community. So these are just a couple places you can go, a few websites uh, in orange that you can check out just to kind of get a flavor and start digging in if you'd like. And of course, my connection or my contact information is here and, and I'm sure CLC can, can share that with you as well if you have, have more questions. But, uh, with that, how am I doing on time, Rachel? About, right, about we've there. We've got plenty minutes, of time, so this is great. And then it's there uh, on, the, on the nose. Um, so I will stop sharing my screen and can share again if I need to. Um, and we'll open it up to, uh, to questions. Wonderful. So let's start with just how does our community in its innovation and entrepreneurial support compare to other cities, especially peer cities? That's a really good question. And I think it's a moving target in many cases. Um, the peer city that I think you'll hear um, brought up the most is probably Pittsburgh. Um, we hear that a lot is how's, how's it working in Pittsburgh? Pro probably because you hear about Carnegie Mellon. Um, and some of the robotics focus that they've that they've brought to uh, to the, the forefront of some of their work. And I think in many cases we we have uh, similar tier one institutions here uh, and we have a, a similar um, capability to focus on on uh, different technologies, but we haven't necessarily found um, through whether it's just Kismet or the or the um, or or if it's deliberate, this one technological vertical, such as robotics um, and companies to support it. So in many cases, we have a broader range of interests here in the, in the innovation ecosystem that drive us. And therefore you might not see as specialized a focus as you would at say um, a, a, a regional area or a city like, like Pittsburgh, for example. Um, if you look at Detroit, um, you will find a similar Sort of things bubbling up, but I think ours is our, our system is a little more robust in terms of its its ability to, to focus on manufacturing and reach out to our broader community. Um, and of course, if you look just slightly uh, more um, east and find, say, Chicago example, they're much larger, but they actually have many of the same interests and in organizations. Um, we have peer institutions over there that focus on, say, manufacturing, for example. They're just more of them because there's a, a much larger population to support. How successful are we as a region in drawing investment funding into the Cleveland market? Uh, great example, or great question. Um, again, I think it's comparison. If you if you look at a place like Silicon Valley and take that as your comparison, um, we're, we've still got a long way to go. Um, however, um, I would say organizations like Jumpstart and others who have uh, brought a lot of concentrated efforts into attracting um, people who may be interested in, in establishing funds here or, um, or have smaller funds that they want, they want to grow um, have, have really ramped up. Even in the last five or six years since I've been around, I've seen a, a massive influx of, uh, of, of investment and funding associated with, um, again, specific technology verticals in many cases, um, but, but still a, a really good trend in terms of where we're going with, with investment and investment capability. Um, I would say, I think we probably have a little, uh, a little ways to catch up to say a Columbus. Um, and there's lots of reasons for that, but I, I think um, we're, we're not so far behind that, that we're just simply a flyover place. We're, we're more and more seen as a place where um, investment should, should, be, uh, should take root. So thinking through, there's kind of really no one front door. And often 
there might be folks who are a little confused about where to go and what might be for them. Could there be benefit in having more of a centralized hub and how might something like that come together? Such a good question and a big one. Um, we have this discussion all the time as an ecosystem, at least in part. Um, I think there are strengths and there are downsides to, to both approaches. On, on the one hand, to centralize um, is it would, may give us the opportunity to have get kind of behind one, say, technology vertical or one industry and say, this is really going to focus on. Um, but at the same time, I think we all have to acknowledge that Northeast Ohio is not necessarily set up that well to streamline and centralize. Look, there are 18 mayors within 10 square miles of me. It's not an easy place to find like one, like one central thing to thrust behind. And that's okay. It, it actually gives us some resilience, I think, uh, as different technologies and trends emerge. I think we have a wonderful healthcare infrastructure that we can easily get behind, beyond a number of technologies. Manufacturing is, of course, really strong. Our access to water here is fabulous and water technology. So I think the kind of spreading around our bets a little bit isn't the worst thing, but I do think that there's always more of an opportunity to collaborate and lead together to put our resources behind the big bets when they're needed uh, to bring about uh, to real change. You mentioned a few of the organizations which are focused more specifically around BIPOC uh, populations. And often we hear that many of our BIPOC entrepreneurs aren't really sure where to go. How do we help spread the word and elevate these organizations that are providing support? So this is another question that the, the ecosystem is highly focused on. Um, and, and again, over the last five years, I've seen this become much, much more, um, more central to, to folks' need. Uh, I think organizations such as Jumpstart have carved out whole sections of, of their organization to focus, explicit, focus explicitly on creating communities of innovators, entrepreneurs, and support structures that exist within those communities to make sure that we're not just sort of talking about them, but talking with them and encouraging uh, them to be part of the overall ecosystem such that we are one ecosystem versus us and them, even being able to kind of saying those communities, it's really our communities being part of these conversations. And that's what you saw uh, in, in the, uh, the organizations that I brought up. Uh, there are structures such as there's a business growth collaborative that was, that was going for several years to kind of connect entrepreneurs and all these organizations together to better understand each other and see the needs that's evolved. Um, into some other mechanisms that that help that process. You also are starting to see in innovation investment inside the communities uh, that need it most. The Huff community, for example, in um, in in just east of of downtown along the the Midtown corridor, is getting uh, our our new building, Magnet's brand new building that's going to be opening in September, where we we are renovating the Margaret Ireland building that sits right in, in the heart of the Huff neighborhood, um, as well as the rest of the Midtown area. Um, I think we all understand that we need to move into these spaces and be part of those communities um, to, help, to help innovation uh, continue to thrive and take root for everyone. As a result of the pandemic, how has the major shift to remote and or hybrid work changed the way geographic boundaries are defined in and impact this space? So uh, I will tell you, it has changed everything about how easy it is to connect to folks. And even just in this example, I mean, how, how, how hard would it have been to get us all in the same room and have lunch provided versus just being able to zoom in and see each other and, and zoom back out. And that's wonderful. Um, I've seen a, a broader willingness to, uh, to change the definition of what it means to be an innovator here. Um, it, it's it could be, hey, you're doing work here and creating, establishing businesses here and developing suppliers here and bringing value here, um, but your team might be spread around the country and that's not as intimidating as it used to be because you don't necessarily need to be physically sitting somewhere uh, to make innovation happen and that's fantastic. Um, so I would say, number one, it's helped collaboration and number two, it's broadened our viewpoint about sort of who and how we can engage with, uh, with innovators. In your opinion, are we doing enough to keep growing companies here as they grow? Never enough. Never, ever enough. We need to do more to support growing companies and keep them here. I think we can do that in a number of ways. I mentioned the blueprint. Um, first of all, we have to understand the talent needs associated with organizations. If we are creating um, populations that are 
trained in the sorts of technologies and skill sets that can help companies thrive, we're going to place be a place that companies not only stay and grow, but come and seek out. Um, so talent absolutely has to be a part of that equation. We need to have the support mechanisms to help companies that are growing transition into the technologies that will make them competitive for the next 10 years. So we need to have a transition mechanism and a support structure associated with that. Um, and technology is, is typically the way uh, that, we, that we help folks do that, at least at Magnet, um, but many of our, our partners do as well. Um, as I mentioned, innovation is a, is a key piece of that puzzle. So you just saw the, in, the innovation ecosystem that is, that is swirling around these organizations. Don't mistake me when I say, if I might say startup, for example, I don't mean that this innovation ecosystem is only for startups, it's for established companies as well, companies that are looking to create new business models or develop new products and services. These techniques and capabilities and, and, uh, and resource networks are just as valuable um, for those sorts of organizations. And of course, leadership. Are we doing enough to be leaders in our community to ask how we can be more together? Um, I'd say we're doing more than we ever have but could do more. Let me give you an example. Um, the, there is a huge grant, um, grant released uh, by the, uh, the, the EDA called the Build Back Better Regional Challenge. And this Build Back Better Regional Challenge uh, challenged regions around the country to come up with proposals to ask for up to $75 million of funding uh, to support innovation ecosystems around certain technologies. Um, or, or industries. And we as a region in Northeast Ohio came together and instead of what we might have done five, 10 years ago and seen five or six different proposals all come out of various organizations all within our region and potentially even compete or shout each other down, we were able to come together as chambers, as, as, uh, as institutions, as organizations and say, we wanna put something together as as a, as a cohesive region. Now, Magnet was fortunate enough to lead that initiative and be the lead applicant um, in that effort, but it included literally dozens of key organizations and seven different sub-projects, all with regional interest across um, our ecosystem. Um, we were chosen as one of 50 out of 500 applicants to get a planning grant. So we were down selected from 500 to 50. We we're the only proposal that came out of Northeast Ohio and we are waiting now and could potentially hear in the next week or two whether that $75 million will, will in fact come to us. Now I will say as a leader from a leadership perspective, that is, that is doing good work for our community. Again, I love the, the question, could we do more? Yes, but I think we're pointed in the right direction. Now, Brandon, you have recently released a book called The Value uh, Proposition Matrix. Can you talk a little bit about what is behind the concept and your, your work around this? Yeah, I'd be happy to. Um, so in, in my work uh, in the ecosystem, and this is, this is also um, at, uh, at Case where I, where I teach, um, this is in collaboration with many of my, my colleagues uh, around the, the system, um, we found that it's challenging in many cases for innovators to clearly and succinctly define the value they're creating. You ask somebody, hey, tell me what you're building, tell me what you're up to, and it might be a 40-minute conversation. Uh, it, we needed to give the people the tools, the easy, simple tools to break down a value proposition to its essential components. Um, so I've built a tool that helps do that. Uh, it breaks it into four key pieces. And then from that, instead of just being able to define your value quickly, you can then say, hey, what are the key guesses I'm making? What are the assumptions I'm making when I'm creating value that can help me understand where I might fail and how to focus my efforts there to better understand how I can spend my limited time and resources? Um, so that's what this, this little and approachable book is about. Is It's a, it's a framework that's, that's supposed to help innovators clarify their value and help identify their assumptions. So many times individuals think they have to have the, the next big greatest idea to be considered innovative or to step into the entrepreneurial space. How can someone kind of tap into their own innovation and creativity to have them be kind of more impactful in their work and in their community? Good question. So uh, let me let me just start with um, if you ever try to define innovation inside your organization, I mean, if you want to have a fun discussion, just ask people at, at your next meeting, like, hey, I, what, how do you define innovation? Do you think you're innovative? And they'll be 
broad range of responses from, oh, you're only innovative if you are on the cover of Fortune developing Facebook um, or the next, you know, electric vehicle, or um, everybody has is innovative in their own way, developing their own um, improvements to uh, processes that might happen all the time. And th there's a broad spectrum. Probably the, the easiest way to differentiate among those folks is not to ask how innovative or how uh, how, how innovative you are, because it, it tends to, innovation tends to be a universal good, but ask, what's the risk profile of the ideas you're working on, right? How risky is it to make an improvement to a process versus to create a brand new business model? And what are the costs and benefits associated with that? And so, and where are you comfortable? Knowing yourself, knowing where you're comfortable asking questions and making improvements is a really uh, important place to start in terms of where along the innovation spectrum you like to exist. And that spectrum, again, is driven by risk as much as it's it's driven by how innovative you are, right? We're all, I've seen tremendously innovative things happen in just sort of improvements to a process that's been going on for a, for a long time. Um, so to, to find, to, to the other part of your question, to find kind of this innovative spirit, um, I would suggest looking for problems and listening to potential customers and just obsess about that. I, I, so often innovators come to me with an idea and they say, this came out of my head and I'm so excited to just kind of push it out and they want to talk about their solution. It turns out where you want to spend a ton of your time early on is obsessing over your customer and the problems they have. Who is going to benefit? And when I say customer, I don't necessarily mean the traditional customer. It could be a client, a, a person you serve, right? whoever you are serving, ask what problems are they experiencing? What friction points are they running into in their day-to-day -day work or their particular aspect of, sort of something they're doing in any given day? And focus very clearly on that problem set. Listen to them. Don't come with a lot of preconceived notions. It's amazing what you will find in terms of how many problems that you'll uncover and how visceral those will be. And then come up with lots of different solutions. Don't be encumbered by your own point of view and your preconceived notions about what those assumptions might be and down select into one that, uh, that generates the most value, meaning solves that problem in a novel way and does so uh, giving folks a lot of value along the way. So as you look ahead, what is your vision for our innovation, innovative and entrepreneurial community here in Cleveland? You know, we, when we talk about our manufacturing blueprint, we, we say that it, it is meant to uh, create a path to leading the world in advanced manufacturing in 10 years. Um, I don't think there's any reason that we can't come together as a region and a community and say, we want to lead the world in, in vibrant innovation systems, right? in our ecosystem. We want to be the innovation ecosystem that's leading the next wave of innovation, the next, I don't want to say, and I've, I've got Michael on the call, so the, 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 this, the next Silicon Valley is not what we want to do here. We want to create something that is unique to us, uh, but to take all these wonderful resources and all these, this fabulous collaboration opportunity and connect it together to be the absolute best version of what we can be. Um, I, I have very high hopes that we're, we're on that path and, and I've, I've seen it. I've seen the change over the last five years and that's definitely where we're going. What can those of us here on the call do to help you achieve that vision? Oh, that's such a good question. You know, I would, I would love for us all to, again, ask a few questions like, who do we serve? Um, who, who are we serving every day that is, uh, and, and how can we focus on making, um, on their problems and getting kind of have a low self-orientation around our own organizations, have a high self-orientation on the folks we're trying to serve. And in, in combination with that, ask again, how can we be more than the sum of our parts? How can we work together um, to, to bring in outside resources that aren't necessarily familiar to us to make highly efficient, really successful outcomes <clears throat> for our community and the, and the folks we serve? Brandon, we are so excited to have had you join us today and share your passion and your vision for this space. And we are very much looking forward to all that's to come in the entrepreneur community here in Cleveland. Thank you for having me. It's wonderful.